Time is money in Disney World and you don't want to waste it, especially on bad food. Today I'm showing you the best things at every restaurant in Disney Springs. Let's get started. When planning a trip to Disney World, you automatically think about booking a hotel, figuring out which rides you want to do, characters you want to meet, but another important factor to consider is the food. What some people would say is the most important part. But what if you have a non-park day? That's when the food games begin. Today, I'm gonna to take you all around Disney Springs to show you the best food in every restaurant, literally every restaurant. And these items are coming from the All Years cast, reporters, and the behind the scenes team. And I must say, we have some pretty good taste. Pretty, pretty good. Who knows, we may even grab one of these best things along the way. Your boy loves to eat. But for the purposes of today, we will be skipping popcorn and pretzel stands, uh, you know, bars only, and generic locations. Really just diving into the Disney Springs food specifics. Now, I am actually here pretty early in the morning. It's only nine o'clock. Uh, and as you can see, things are uh, really dead here. Typically, Disney Springs is an afternoon, evening place. I mean, they've even, they've even got a truck. They got a big old truck in the middle of Disney Springs, just backing on up. Now, I'm here pretty early because we have a lot to get through, and honestly, I wasn't sure how much time this was gonna take because there are over 65 uh, restaurants and food offerings here in Disney Springs. Disney Springs is where you can discover an eclectic mix of unique shops and one-of-a-kind restaurants, plus lively entertainment. It's basically an outlet mall, but on a larger-than-life Disney level. Now, Disney says they have over 98 shops, 23 attractions slash shows, and over 65 dining experiences. Now, speaking of live entertainment, because live entertainment is important, hashtag it. I will say I am a Disney Springs stan. We still stay, are we still saying Stan? Mom, cringe. I like Disney Springs. Just because it's constantly changing with nighttime entertainment, they've got romantic meals, uh, cars that can swim, and even a full on circus. But today is about food, so let's get started. There are four different areas that make up Disney Springs. That would be the west side. This is where I am right now. That's where you're gonna find uh, Cirque du Soleil, Drawn to Life, House of Blues, the giant Disney Springs balloon, AMC theaters. Then there's the town center. That's where you're gonna find all your shopping. The thing that really makes it an outlet mall. It has like the uh, was it Sephora, Zara. The landing, which I believe to have all of the best restaurants, in my personal opinion. The Boathouse, the Edison, Raglan Road, the uh, Hangar Bar, and so much more. And then the Marketplace, which I believe to be the, the Disney side of things. Where you're gonna find Once Upon a Toy, the world of Disney, the Lego store. Over on the west side, there's City Works Eatery and Poor House. And City Works Eatery and Poor House is where you can discover the ultimate sports bar. This upbeat eatery features classic American fare and an incredible beer menu. Now, according to Disney, you can head over to City Works for a brilliant gourmet cuisine with a chef driven twist. With over 90 local and global craft brew varieties all on tap and a premium sports viewing experience that's pretty hard to beat. Now, family and friends can enjoy a lively meal indoors amidst the restaurant's uh, high energy atmosphere. We've got huge, massive state of the art uh, HD TVs almost literally at every angle. And they also have this uh, great outdoor uh, patio as well, in case you know, it's, you know, today's a little nasty. I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's, it's pretty gray outside today. It's, it's been a little nasty the past couple days at the time of filming. But they do have their heaters out because it is starting to get a little chilly, so it might be fun to sit outside on the patio. I don't know. All right, real talk. This is going to be your most sports bar experience to Disney. We're talking about like Chili's, uh, uh, you know, Friday, TGA Fridays, you know, all those things. But it is a little more of an elevated sports bar experience because it's at Disney Springs. Hey, my favorite thing to get here is the Nashville Hot Chicken Wrap. The servers, they will warn you about the heat because it is a Nashville hot chicken wrap, but for someone who really enjoys spicy foods, it was not that spicy. I, I will say it wasn't Disney spicy, which is more flavor than spice, but uh, I really enjoy spicy foods and I could take the heat. Now they do have some other pretty solid options here as well. It's your basic burger, beer, sports bar joint. It's a safe bet, but the Nashville hot chicken wrap, my favorite. I I'm only giving you one thing from each place. We gotta go, we gotta move this. Is all <laughs> Did I, did I say that right? Over 65 places? Come on! Now this is the Smokehouse at House of Blues. Now the Smokehouse is located on the west side of Disney Springs. And this is where you can savor slow cooked favorites and barbecue classics at this simmering stop outside of House of Blues Restaurant and Bar. And now you can uh, grab some pulled pork sandwiches here, smoked turkey legs, and all beef hot dogs. Then wash it all down with your, you know, classic cold draft beer or some wine. But the thing that I have to talk about while I'm here is this bad boy. 
Yeah, we're talking about number 14, the street corn dog with chipotle aioli, cheese, cilantro, crema, tagine, 100% beef, so good. Now, if you're familiar with street corn, you know, it's a little, it's, you know, it's messy, it's got a Latin kick to it, but it's packed with flavors. It's the same kind of situation. It's not corn on the cob, except this is corn dog. So it's got that 100% beef corn dog. It's so good, and I cannot recommend this enough. Uh, I'm irritated, I'm here so early. This is, this is one of the things I would have gotten. Mm. All right, we'll keep going. Next up, we actually have the restaurant, which is the House of Blues, the restaurant. They literally just call it the restaurant. House of Blues, the restaurant. Now the House of Blues restaurant bar is actually located on the west side, where you can feast on American cuisine with a New Orleans twist at this lively folk art filled eatery and watering hole. One of the most unique things about the uh, House of Blues restaurant, I would say, is the decor on the inside. It is so eclectic. Uh, it is as if uh, a bunch of musicians went in there and just literally uh, decked it out with um, whatever they wanted to. <laughs> Old license plate, different memorabilia, uh, crazy artwork, hats and sunglasses, paintings on the wall. It's wild in there. But really, we're talking about the food. Now, I had to do my research on this one because uh, I'd only been here once before, but my entire team tells me that the best thing to get here is definitely the jambalaya. And it's definitely a New Orleans jambalaya. We got that sauteed chicken, and dually sausage, onion, bell pepper, celery, Cajun rice, and you can add Cajun shrimp for $7. I'm super excited to try this, but my team tells me it is so spicy. And I'm talking about like, like, it's gonna get to you, Cajun spice. For some of these places, you're gonna need reservations just because they are super popular. City Works, I've never had an issue uh, just walking in. Uh, obviously the smokehouse, that's, uh, that's more of a stand. You can just walk up to it, uh, wait in line, get your food. But I highly recommend if you wanna get um, uh, a seat at the House of Blues, the restaurant, if you're looking for a table at the House of Blues, the restaurant, I would definitely grab a reservation. It's pretty popular, but oftentimes that you'll see a lot of people there for a concert or you know, after, uh, after a gospel brunch or whatever. Next up, Haleo by Jose Andreas. Haleo is actually located on the west side of Disney Springs, where they ask you to savor the flavors, enjoy authentic dishes that celebrate the spirit of España amidst a vibrant atmosphere. Now, Disney Springs actually considers this a uh, fine signature dining, so reservations are strongly recommended. And if you've been to Haleo before, I definitely recommend coming again because uh, I actually, a couple years ago, I wrote it off. I was like, you know what, uh, I, I tried it once and it wasn't my favorite, but Quincy and Emma actually came back back here uh, recently and they did a full review. You can check that video up on the channel and they said that, uh, that there were a lot of changes made and, th and watch the video. They'll go, they'll go over all the changes, but we're going to talk about one of my favorite things uh, to get here at Haleo. Now, what is paella? It's actually a dish that dates back hundreds of years when farmers would gather together and you know, they would all bring different things from their crops and literally throw it into a big cooking pot. It'd, it'd be huge and they would just make all the things. So they would have, you know, chicken, fish, it's basically a hodgepodge recipe in the Spanish culture. And I think if you're gonna go to Haleo, I think the best thing that, uh, that I've had and the thing you've gotta try is the paella. Now it can be pretty expensive, but it really, it feeds everybody. And the chefs are literally always cooking paella, probably because it's so recommended. It's actually kind of fun. Each time a paella is done, they actually shout paella and the whole restaurant shouts it back. Now something to note, Haleo has different paellas every night. There's the standard one that comes with like chicken, pork ribs, pork and shrimp, and that is so good. It's the one that I've had and I, and I really, really, really recommend it. But if you're interested in the paella and you're coming to Haleo, you might want to call beforehand because uh, we've talked to some of our team and I think one night they had a really, really weird paella. So just know before you go. And for all my vegetarian peeps out there, uh, you can uh, request a vegetarian uh, paella, but it will take 45 minutes or so because they do make each paella from scratch. And actually attached to Haleo is Pepe. Pepe is located on the west side and that's where you can savor amazing Spanish food truck fare from famed chef Jose Andreas. And it's definitely perfect for quick and pleasing meals. This is definitely more of a grab and go place. There's some indoor seating, but really I've only ever had stuff to go here. And the thing that I really, really enjoy and especially the rest of my team really loves is the Pepito de Terna. I'm obviously butchering that. It's basically a steak sandwich and it is so good. There are huge chunks of perfectly grilled steak. The cheese on it is mild, but it's not super lost with the rest of the sandwich. 
Uh, but the thing that's really interesting is the uh, the bread. Now the bread they call it pan de cristal. I, I assume I'm hopefully I'm saying that right. It actually just translates to glass bread because it's supposed to make the sound of a shattering glass when you bite in, which makes sense because the bread was crispy but somehow chewy on the inside. So definitely uh, Pepe, I would say uh, you've got to visit next time. Coming up next is Splitsville. Splitsville is located, again, on the west side of Disney Springs, where you can discover food, music, and entertainment fit for a kingpin at this retro restaurant. That's a fun description. Inside of Splitsville, is that it's actually part restaurant, part bowling alley. And typically when you go to a bowling alley, you know, you're gonna get your chicken fingers, you're gonna get, I don't know, your, uh, you know, your popcorn, or I don't, I don't, it's been a long time since I've been to a bowling alley. But this is basically your elevated bowling alley experience because the food here is, surprisingly good. In fact, myself, Breedlove, Emma, Quincy, we all just did a review here at uh, Splitsville where we were really surprised with the food. They had sushi, sushi here at uh, Splitsville. But I, I want to talk about two things real quick. The best thing to eat here for sure, my personal favorite, is the killer bee. Now the killer bee is a pizza and I said it was elevated but hear me out. What they've done is a pizza with hot honey and it is just next level. It is so good. It's just the right amount of kick. We're talking about a lot of spicy things today. Just realize that. It's got just the right amount of sweetness. It's a nice balance between the heat and the, and the sweetness and uh, drizzled, uh, drizzled over the cheese. I mean, it's a great, sweet, savory balance with a kick and I, I love it. Can't get a little sticky, so be careful when you're bowling. Now, I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about the outdoor bars, but I'm gonna talk about this real quick because they do have a to-go bar. The thing I wanna talk about are these uh, uh, frozen beverages. Now, typically, I am not a person who says, grab the pre-mixed drink. That's not me, that's not how I live. However, I was here the other day and I recently learned that the same people who own Fat Tuesdays, if you're familiar with Fat Tuesdays, uh, it's a very, very popular uh, Key West, New Orleans um, uh, beverage where, where you can literally get, a, they're, they're very strong, uh, alcoholic slushies, I suppose that you can add extra shots in and things like that. Same people who do these. So if you're looking for a little bit of a Fat Tuesday experience here at Disney Springs, now you know. Speaking of sweet and savory, here's Everglazed Donuts and Cold Brew. Also located on the west side, where you can enjoy a warm handmade donut and a refreshing cold brewed coffee in a classic donut shop where happiness is glazed daily. That's the little slogan. Now this best food is probably gonna be a little controversial here, but just hear me out. And now the big reveal for what I believe to be the controversial pick for best eat here at Everglazed. Oh yeah. I'm talking about <laughs> the grilled cheese donut. Now I know this is a weird choice, but I really do believe, and a lot of our friends uh, on, uh, on Ollie's Net, they believe that this is underrated. It's a fun balance of sweet and savory. It is a little messy, but they literally cut a donut right through the middle. They flip it and they make it into a grilled cheese. So let's, it's been a while, but I'm so good. Hold on. Don't get me wrong. It's very simple. It is literally cheese and a glazed donut, but it's just a fun treat. It's definitely your 10.30 food. You know, when it's like too, probably too late for breakfast, but, but not quite there for lunch, you know what I mean? It's a fun brunch donut. Now at Everglaze, you can get other offerings like uh, nitro uh, cold brew coffee. They've got a great chicken sandwich there as well, but you know, I'm here trying to find the fun stuff. Now at the time of filming, Summer House on the Lake has not opened yet, which is going to be a new restaurant here at Disney Springs. So keep an eye on the channel because uh, we're gonna do a review on it. But it should be opening later on this year, 2023, so we'll see what happens. And this is Starbucks. Nah, I just kidding. All right, not bad, friends. I'm knocking down this list. We have made it to AMC Dine-In Theaters. Now, this is a movie theater, I know, but you can actually eat there, so we're gonna talk about it. Now, all of the AMC dine-in theaters are located uh, on the west side, and this is where Disney says you can take dinner and the movies to a whole new heights. You can enjoy gourmet meals at the state-of-the-art theater. Moviegoers are in for a treat while watching the latest blockbuster, from plush, reserved seating to the powerful image and sound technologies provided by Dolby Cinema, in addition to two marketplace concession stands stocked with grab-and-go treats, six out of the 24 theaters here offer a unique dine-in service that serves handcrafted food and drinks right to your seat. So not only are you getting full meals in your movie theater, it's also a full bar. There's a bar in there called McGuffin's. Now the only way to really visit McGuffin's 
is to uh, actually have a ticket to the movies. So not just a bar you can pull up to, have a drink, and then leave. Now, Disney does call it gourmet food. Unfortunately, in my opinion, it is going to be, uh, and I've been here many times, because it's definitely uh, a fun date night and uh, just a different movie experience. But it is gonna be the food that you would expect to come out of a movie theater at Disney Springs. You're certainly not getting a three Michelin star experience in there. It, it is fun to be able to, I don't know, have a, have a full meal in front of you while you're watching a movie. You have your, you know, your burgers, you've got, you know, your, your fish tacos, uh, chicken fingers, and recently one of our team members did get the Royal Bacon Brie Burger, and they highly recommended it, which means I had to plan a date night. I came here, I got it, and I liked it a lot. There were interesting flavors, uh, different texture components. It had applewood smoked bacon, brie, caramelized onion, arugula, fig jam, and royal sauce. Of course, it came with french fries, so it definitely was an elevated burger. Was it the best burger? Nah. We're gonna talk about really good burgers in a second. However, was it probably the best thing I've had here? Yes. We have made it to the landing, so let's land at Marie and Enzo's. Marie and Enzo's Ristorante <laughs> is located at the landing, and that's where you can save authentic Italian cuisine, where the ambiance harkens back to the golden age of air travel. But really, Marie and Enzo's asks you to relish the traditional flavors of Sicilian cooking. It is set in a transformed airline terminal. And, I'm, and, I, and to myself, I, would th I say, who themes the restaurant after an airport? Apparently, Marie and Enzo do. However, I will say it has these huge, giant windows with a gorgeous view of Lake Buena Vista, which is the big lake here at Disney Springs. It is open for lunch and dinner, but it isn't a huge popular restaurant, so even though reservations are required, I wouldn't necessarily run to make the reservation. You can probably show up and, uh, and probably be seated on the spot. That's been quite a while since I have personally eaten here, so I had to take to our All Ears Net team. And a lot of these reviews you can actually find on allears.net. But I asked some of our reporters, and they said that there was nothing super stand out about uh, Maria and Enzo's. But apparently there are some really incredible cheese fritters served with this spicy tomato sauce. That is a must-have appetizer. And I'll magically insert the name here, because I can't pronounce it. I'm not Italian. Now attached to Maria and Enzo's is actually a pizza restaurant where you can grab a uh, pretty significant slices of pizza as well as some fun uh, Italian desserts. This is the pizza joint that actually has the largest slice of pizza in all of Disney Springs called the Big Roman and Yes, that is that is actual size. It's a pretty it's a pretty significant uh, amount of pizza. Now I would call this the pizza place for picky eaters because it's going to be your middle of the road pizza. It's definitely better than a pizza Rizzo or a pizza Fari at uh, Hollywood Studios or Animal Kingdom uh, because the you know the dough is real. You, it's got that floury taste a little bit. Uh, but uh, the thing I would recommend here because uh, if I do come here, it's probably with uh, my family who have little ones who are uh, a little pickier. I do love the four cheese pizza because it doesn't go down easy if it ain't cheesy. I wouldn't go out of my way for this pizza, but if you are traveling with people who are just huge pizza fans, but aren't out to be adventurous for a place we'll talk about a little later on, then uh, you can come here instead. Now, before we get to this next place, I want to talk about how much it makes me laugh. <laughs> because, you know, there's Marie and Enzo's, right? Uh, this is like they've got a pretty good life, uh, but this, <laughs> This place feels like Enzo just really couldn't take Maria. Just like, just had enough. I've had enough of Maria. So Enzo decided to build their own man cave because there's another place that's connected to Maria and Enzo's and actually the Edison as well. And that is Enzo's Hideaway Tunnel Bar and Restaurant. Enzo's Hideaway is located at the landing, or should I say, under the landing. And this is where you can sip on Prohibition-era cocktails and enjoy delicious bites at a tunnel bar, exuding an intimate 1920s speaky Italian vibe. And it is very intimate, so reservations are strongly recommended. It is a nasty day. It's raining, but we're going to see if we can show you a little bit of this. We walk down these steps here. Say, sorry, Maria. I'm going to Enzo's. <laughs> it's as if uh, you were to knock on this door and ha you have to give someone a password. Luckily you don't, but that's the vibe here. You knock on it. I'd like to make someone an offer they can't refuse. Unfortunately, I do think Maria and Enzo, his hideaway and Maria and Enzo's, uh, they're just missing the mark a bit because every time I talk to my team, I say, hey, what's your favorite thing that you've ever had? What's the best thing? We've got to let the people know. They've all come up short. 
In fact, the biggest piece of advice that I got for uh, Enzo's Hideaway is to go with something that you're familiar with. There's gonna be a lot of uh, strong Sicilian uh, language, like Italian on the menu that you're probably not going to understand. Things are going to be, um, they're going to be read to you one way, but probably appear uh, to you in a completely different way. So the recommendation was to go something a little simple. Uh, names, again, I can't pronounce, but we'll uh, put the name here. Spaghetti e polpette, no. It's basically spaghetti and meatballs. Or the ravioli formaggi, which is cheese ravioli. Simple is best here. One of my favorites, just off of the ambiance alone, and because they do have some great live entertainment, the Edison. Now the Edison located at the landing is where you can swing by this industrial gothic themed hotspot for classic American cuisine, signature cocktails, and live entertainment. It is really a, a chic throwback ambiance. It's basically designed to resemble an abandoned 1920s power plant. When people ask me how to describe the Edison, I always say think of Great Gatsby meets steampunk. Reservations, again, for the Edison are probably a must-have, meaning you can't just walk up and not expect a longer wait time. However, if you just want to drink at the bar, and if you see bar seats available, there are several bars located uh, throughout all the Edison. There's a bar upstairs, uh, there are two bars downstairs, so if you just want to see the bar, that's cool too. They do have some fun specialty cocktails uh, that are on the high roller list that are definitely more expensive because you're a high roller, but what's really cool is you get a commemorative coin uh, if you uh, or purchase one of these beverages, and if you have four of these coins, you can turn on all four coins for a free beverage. So that's like a fun, a fun. I don't know. Collect. I I don't want to give my. I only, I've only purchased one. I don't want to give my coin up because I just like the coin. So I'm probably never going to do that. But it's a thing to know. Now the fun things to eat here, in my opinion, are the appetizers. They have these really great Electra fries, which are basically Idaho potatoes, this Edison special sauce, which feels to me like a cheesy sour cream situation. You got bacon, uh, grated Parmesan cheese, those are really good. But after polling the rest of the Allers Net team, the thing that we said it had to be was the clothesline candied bacon, which is bacon candied with maple and black pepper, and it comes with like sweet and spicy pickles. It only comes with like five pieces of bacon, and the whole thing is pretty expensive, but the bacon is just so good. I mean, five pieces of bacon for $18 is pretty steep, but uh, the presentation is cool because they're on a clothesline, and the candied bacon is sweet, it's crunch, it's crispy, like it's, it's, a, it's a nice crisp to it, but it's still a little fatty for the people who love that fatty bacon. But the appetizer where it's at, the Edison. But I can't, uh, I can't walk away from the Edison without saying, hashtag live entertainment is important. We've got a great band in there, as well as some fun atmosphere entertainment, singers, musicians. I will say the Edison is not as hopping as it used to be. There, uh, there used to be a full, almost like a full dance party band in there uh, on the weekends. They used to clear the floor of the tables. They used to have a whole like dance floor situation. They had acrobats and they had the Pearls, who were these incredible dancers who would come out in between the band set and they just slayed. So I hope we bring some of that back because that really brought the Edison to life. But for now, the Edison has a more chill, Gatsby, steampunk, relaxed vibe. And probably the place that wins the award for um, most expensive or fanciest date night, STK. Now STK Steakhouse, uh, also located on the landing, it's where you can escape the ordinary when you dine in this ultra-modern steakhouse offering incredible cuisine and an upbeat vibe. Now this is gonna be your basic American food, your seafood, and of course your steakhouse. And yes, Disney consider this fine signature dining. If you'd like to eat here, reservations are strongly required because even though uh, it could, it's definitely more on the expensive side, this is a sought after reservation. Now if you come to STK, if you can, if you're not a vegetarian, uh, if you're not a vegan, uh, I do recommend getting their steak because that is kind of their signature. That is what they're known for. So, so we're gonna throw out two different options at STK uh, in case you're interested. Now something I have personally had before, uh, because you know it was our one date night and we were going in. It was a 28 ounce dry aged porterhouse. Now it is pricey for a 28 ounce steak. It's around 122 dollars. So if you can swing it, it would it'd be kind of a cool option to say, hey, I just had a 28 ounce steak. You know what I'm saying? We did split it, but it was 
when I tell you it was so good. Uh, I tend to order my steak medium. I'm not a huge medium rare person or rare. Uh, I, I don't love a lot of ping, but because it is steak, uh, to get it anywhere past the medium, I, I think I would, I would be ridiculed. And you deserve it. The steak was cooked to perfection. It was almost like butter, the way you could cut it with ease. It had a nice sear, it tasted delicious. Uh, recommend 10 out of 10 if you can swing it, a thousand percent. But definitely on the simpler side, if you're looking for to not spend a hundred dollars on a steak. Another item that our team recommends is the glazed beef short rib. It's served with a unique green apple confit and a horseradish cream. Now there's a sweet glaze on it. It falls apart really great. Uh, so definitely short beef rib. You can try that out. Or the 32 ounce porterhouse if you're looking to go crazy at SDK. Keep on rocking on with the landing. Paradiso 37, Taste of the Americas. This is where you can soak up waterfront views as you savor flavorful dishes inspired by popular street foods of the Americas. This is where you're gonna find your classic American food as well as Latin food. And Disney does call it a little bit of a steakhouse as well. Now, when I've eaten here in the past, it is definitely an eclectic style of food because you're gonna get North America vibes, Central America vibes, and South America vibes without leaving Orlando. But the thing that my entire team agrees on is the Honolulu pulled pork sandwich. So the sandwich itself is made with like a slow roasted pulled pork, uh, this grilled pineapple coleslaw with a whiskey barbecue sauce, and it was so good. Thing that's always important for me, uh, just like the force, is balance. <laughs> Star Wars. The savory of the whiskey barbecue sauce and that pulled pork balanced really well with the tart pineapple uh, and the coleslaw added a nice crunch to it. So overall, all the textural components I'm looking for, all of the flavor components I'm looking for, really great stuff, solid balance. And uh, uh, yeah, this is, that's what I would get here again. Jock Lindsay's hangar bar, also located at the landing, is where you can quench your thirst at this vintage airplane hangar turned dive bar. Now, if the name Jock Lindsay rings a bell, it's because it's, it's a Indiana Jones. It's an Indiana Jones themed bar. You know, it's funny, people don't, not a lot of people really understand that, but inside you can find some really uh, cute nods to Indiana Jones and that franchise. There's even a fun nod to the SEA, which is uh, the Society of Explorers and Adventurers. The Society of Explorers and Adventurers are now everywhere. I mean, Skipper Canteen or Tokyo, I mean, they're, they're literally everywhere. But let's get into this backstory for a second, because I, I, I just think more people should know about this. So just a quick thing to jog your memory, Jock Lindsay is actually uh, Indiana Jones' pilot. You know, the one who is the owner of the pet snake named Reggie. But how did Jock arrive here at Disney Springs? The two globetrotters stumbled on Disney Springs in 1938 while chasing down a mythology-based trip in Central Florida. Attracted to the town's natural springs and lush terrain, Jock bought some waterfront property and eventually settled down piloting seaplane tours across the fast-growing Sunshine State. Jock eventually built an airplane hangar air tower and runway and invited fellow members of the Society of Explorers and Adventurers to pay him a visit. His home base soon became a popular stopover and watering hole for world travelers and locals alike, which is how Jock Lindsay's hangar bar was born. And now today, thrill-seeking families cross borders and continents to soak up the rugged charm of this artifact-strewn hangar bar with its spare air airplane parts, salvaged equipment, and dusty mementos of glory days gone by. What's super fun is that during the holidays, there's actually a whole holiday layover, and they've got a whole new holiday menu. So make sure to check out allers.net for all that fun. One of our favorite things to get here is the Club Obi-Wan Chicken Wings. And that's served with lime sour cream, toss in your choice of Shanghai barbecue, bird's eye chili, or St. Augustine uh, pepper sauce. Now the reason we like the hangar bar so much is just because it's enough for like a light snack and you can keep moving on, but it's not gonna be crazy that it's gonna weigh you down because what we like to do, what I like to do specifically, what I forced onto the team to like, is uh, a taste of Disney Springs. So what we do is, it's basically a, it's basically a, a bar crawl, if you will, but, uh, but food is involved. So that way you're gonna stop here and get a beverage and your Obi-Wan wings. Then you're gonna go to the boat house, you're gonna grab some, uh, some, uh, you know, a lobster tail, I don't know, <laughs> some food there and, and a beverage there. Then you go to Raglan Road, you know, it's, uh, and it's like, uh, that way you're not sitting down for a full meal where you're like, I chose Morimoto today. And I, now I don't get to try anything else because I'm stuffed. This is where, that's how you get to experience all of Disney Springs. In fact, Emma and I did a whole video about it and you can check it up on the channel. We've been talking a lot about, uh, Actually, honestly, some great meals and some great beverages here at the landing. But let's dive into something that's just a little more sweet. And I'm talking about Gideon's Bakehouse. Now here at Gideon's is where you can try handcrafted and dreadfully delicious uh, bakehouse cookies. Now the reason I say dreadfully delicious that way is because inside it has this whole spooky, uh, almost haunted feel. 
And I think it's what makes it so appealing is that you're getting these really delicious, sweet um, cookies and cakes and curiosities inside of this dark, uh, um, spooky, creepy location. Now, as you can tell, there is quite the line uh, to get into Gideon's. It is very, very busy. Uh, it's always busy. Just for fun, that's the entrance. And all the way back here. Is the start of the line. Right now they're saying it's about, uh, it's about an hour 15 wait to get inside. And when it first opened, there was actually a virtual queue in order, literally, like, like as if you're waiting for Tron, a virtual queue for some cookies. But let's talk about my favorite cookie. I had to flip my hat around because it was just blocking the rain from my face. And that is actually the cookies and cream cookie. Each cookie weighs almost a half a pound. So you can imagine how dense these cookies are, filled with chocolate, filled with uh, sweetness. But I like the cookies and cream uh, cookie just because it's just like the original, but just a little bit of added uh, chocolatey goodness. Uh, that's a lot of fun for me. The original chocolate chip cookie, I gotta say, is also really, really, really good. But they have different cookies and cakes that you can try here. They've got, they've got a whole peanut butter upon peanut butter cake, a triple chocolate cookie. It's a, it's a lot. So you gotta come try it for yourself. Wine Bar George, located at the landing, is where you can make yourself home in an estate-style wine bar featuring wine and food masterfully paired by Master Sommelier George. Now, Wine Bar George actually has two different, uh, you know, venues to it. There's the main uh, restaurant location, and then right underneath here is the basket. And that's where you can get uh, things to go. A couple of fun things you can get at the basket, like uh, crispy mac and cheese bites, pumpkin fritters. Uh, hand pies, things like that. But they do have some really fun, unique frozen drinks. Uh, so they have two. Right now they have uh, Frosé, which is a rosé, which is obviously alcoholic, and a cold fashioned, which is obviously an old fashioned, but frozen. It's fun and interesting. But we're talking about uh, the main uh, wine bar George today. And this has my favorite appetizer, maybe, maybe in all of Walt Disney World property. I, I had it, <laughs> I've had it multiple times and each time I'm like, I gotta tell this person about this. Uh, it's the Saganaki, it's basically cheese on fire. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but it's Viorda cheese. And then, they, and then they sprinkle it with alcohol, they set it ablaze, and they have these really great crostinis that you're able to dip it with. And then just a light shower of some lemon juice and it is just delicious. The thing I have to say about it is that you have to kind of eat it quickly while it lasts because uh, after it's not hot, it starts to get a little funky. Um, but my, there are two favorite parts about it is obviously first when they first did a blaze, cheese, it's so hot and mixed with the, the flavors of the uh, the lemon and uh, and a little bit of, uh, of the alcohol. It's so good. Even uh, they, they burned it off, but just the, I think it's the, the torched flavor. Y'all know what I'm talking about when I say torched flavor. It's so good. But you know, you know when you were a kid and you were making nachos and you let the cheese on the pan sit there a little too long and the cheese got crusty? That starts to happen with this dish and it's, oh, it's just next level. Sakanaki, Wine Bar George. That might be top pick for all of Disney Springs for me. And in case you couldn't see it behind this wall of people waiting for Gideon's, it's uh, Morimoto. Now, Morimoto Asia is another fine dining restaurant where you can savor pan Asian cuisine made by, well, not made by him every night, but the, the food was designed by Chef Morimoto from Iron Chef. Now, just like Wine Bar George, there are two different versions of Morimoto, two different levels, I suppose. There's Morimoto Street Food, which is more of a uh, quick service, grab and go situation. And then there's the fine dining restaurant inside of Morimoto. Luckily, the food that our team, that we agree is some of the best food at Morimoto, you can actually also find here at Morimoto Street Food. So you can do the fine dining version or the grab and go version, and that is the spare ribs. My favorite thing about the spare ribs, one, uh, the meat is juicy, it's tender, but I love the sweet sticky glaze they put on top of the spare ribs, delicious. And I love that you can get it in both places uh, because at Morimoto, you have to make a reservation. Definitely it's not after a reservation, you're gonna have to do it. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. But if you're looking for our favorite dish at Morimoto, you can get it here, nice and easy. Next up, we have Chef Art Smith's homecoming, Florida Kitchen Southern Shine. This is gonna be your feel good, comfort food, 
uh, southern style. And as you can see, it's pretty busy. You're gonna want reservations if you wanna come to Homecoming, which this is actually one of my favorite places to come here as well. And recently, Emma did a full review up on the channel. You can check that out. Now, what you're definitely gonna want to try here at Homecoming, because I think it's the most Homecoming thing you can get besides, you know, uh, baked mac and cheese, is the thigh-high chicken biscuits, which are three biscuits topped with Chef Art's famous fried chicken thighs, bread and butter pickles, drizzled with hot honey. Now it is true southern style, good home cooking fried chicken. Breading is crispy, the, the chicken is moist, it's got, the, it's got that home cooking seasoning, and that hot honey just literally takes it to a whole nother level. But uh, again, it's Chef Art's homecoming. He made all these recipes super good. Uh, cannot recommend this place enough. Definitely my favorite brunch spot. If you wanna come here for brunch, this is what I would recommend. And then you can pop it off at, the, oh wait, I'll show you, come here. Right next door attached to homecoming is a moonshine bar called the Shine Bar and Social. You know, literally pull up a seat at the bar, grab a table, or enjoy your moonshine cocktails to go. Now, a lot of the moonshine cocktails are pre-mixed, but uh, there is a full bar inside that you can uh, kind of get what, get what you want. We are coming up to a Disney Springs, or even downtown Disney classic, Raglan Road. Raglan Road Irish Pub and Restaurant, which is located at the landing, is where you can discover the life and soul of the Emerald Isle with award-winning cuisine, live Irish music, and dance at this beautiful pub. Before we get into the food, I gotta say, this is one of the uh, more lively places that you're going to attend here uh, while visiting Disney Springs. Uh, but what's fun about this, there's a unique stage right in the middle of the restaurant. It's not like there's like a stage uh, there's like a stage where everybody's looking. It's like right in the middle of the action. So that's pretty cool. It's very immersive. Which leads me to what I wanted to talk about, which is you, I believe, uh, and a lot of our team believes, you come to Raglan Road for the experience and not necessarily for their award-winning dishes. Uh, we've been here a bunch of times and not once have we been like, wow, this is the best thing I've ever had, ever! You know, uh, but there are a couple things that are worth mentioning. First things first, something that I really enjoyed was the pull the box tea. Uh, it was about $17, which is basically Irish style crispy box tea potato cake, pulled ham hock, caramelized red onions, and cheese sauce. The crispy box tea potato cake, it was uh, crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. It was, uh, it was, it literally was a potato cake. I was like, a carb cake? Sign me up! And it's definitely more of an appetizer, something to share for sure. The other thing to mention was the Worth the Weight Beef Sandwich, which is a 12-hour braised beef, garlic aioli, sautéed mushrooms, crispy onions, and smoked cheddar on a ciabatta roll. Now, I am not a huge mushroom fan, so when I did get this, I did take the mushrooms off because I just, I just don't do mushrooms. But the garlic aioli kind of soaked into the braised beef and it was just delicious. Uh, I, I really, I really enjoyed this. So those are the foods I'm sticking to, but again, Come for the experience, come for the incredible dancers, the incredible singers, the musicians, uh, and have an appetizer while you're there. And some Guinness, because that's, that's Irish, right? But next to the hole in the wall, also part of Raglan Road, is Cook's Fish and Chips. Now don't get me wrong, the fish and chips here are very good, but they're not as good as the Yorkshire Fish Company over at Epcot. Uh, uh, th those, uh, those really, they just can't be beat. But they're not bad fish and chips. However, the thing that weirdly surprised me was actually their Bang Bang Chicken Loaded Chips, which is basically crispy chicken, grilled peppers, and onions covered in Bang Bang sauce. And it's basically the same Bang Bang sauce or firecracker sauce that you would get on uh, shrimp, potentially at the boathouse. However, what they did with it was really good. It was a fun snack, uh, and it was super shareable. It's my favorite thing to get there. Uh, now, fish and chips are still good there. However, I just think you can find better fish and chips um, surprisingly at Epcot. And now we're coming up to the boathouse where you can find great food, waterfront dining, some really fantastic like antique boats. But this is gonna be your seafood location. The one that I would recommend over the other seafood locations here at Disney Springs. A couple things to mention here at the boathouse. There is a really great seating indoors, multiple rooms. You can even uh, have one of the rooms used as an event space in, in case you're planning uh, a smaller event like a birthday or a wedding and you want to you know buy out a room that's cool too my favorite place here in all of boathouse is there it's called the dockside bar there's a huge dock that goes all the way off that location uh there's a great bar uh, lots of tables around it it does fill up quickly just because it's more of an intimate space but on better days not like today but on better days uh with the, where, where there's a, a nice breeze or maybe it's a little bit sunny you're looking for some shade you want to sit on, on a lake it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, as far as food goes, uh, 
you've got to love seafood. I mean, they do have some burgers, but that's not really the reason to come here. They've got a great lobster tail Oscar. The firecracker shrimp, I would also recommend. However, the thing I would definitely stay away from is the lobster roll. Uh, financially, the juice is just not worth the squeeze. You can find better lobster rolls elsewhere. There's not, uh, for, for the amount that you're paying, you're not getting the uh, amount of lobster I would like for the amount that I'm paying for the lobster roll. But my recommendation would be to go to the dockside bar, grab a, grab a lobster tail, grab some oysters, because they do have an oyster bar here, grab a, some firecracker shrimp, some maybe some pimento cheese, grab a beverage. They've got a great old fashioned here and uh, enjoy your time. Speaking of seafood, this is Paddlefish. This is definitely more of a fine dining seafood restaurant. However, it doesn't have the best reviews. Really, the coolest thing about Paddlefish, in my opinion, is that it is a literal giant boat sitting on Lake Buena Vista. Uh, it, I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous, uh, and the uh, the inside is pretty, the outside is pretty. There's even a rooftop bar that uh, is currently closed due to weather, but I recommend uh, on, a, on a better day. It has gorgeous views of all of Disney Springs, gorgeous views of Lake Buena Vista. Go up there, grab a drink, grab a seat, and order an appetizer. But personally, I don't think Paddlefish is currently worth your time as it is now. Especially because one of my favorite things uh, when, I, when I did get the opportunity to come here was the lobster corn dog. I know, here, I know that sounds weird, but it was literally lobster in, wrapped in like the corn dog uh, casing. And it was so good. And it's not here anymore, which is a huge bummer. After polling our team, they haven't said, I really like this, I really like this. Uh, it was a lot of like, nah, everything was just okay. Um, luckily, one person on our behind the scenes team said that the fries topped with crab was their favorite thing, and that was the appetizer. And if that doesn't say that, you know, we've got to work on this menu a little bit, then I don't know what does. But hey, come from Paddlefish. Try the fries topped with crab. Right next to Paddlefish is Terralina Crafted Italian, and that's also located, obviously, at the landing. And Terralina invites you to delight in waterfront views as you indulge in classic Italian flavors from executive chef Justin Plank. Now, this is definitely more of an intimate Italian feast where you uh, gather your family together in a warm, uh, rustic setting and enjoy authentic Italian dishes. The wood-burning oven fires a selection of family-friendly hand-tossed pizzas, pastas, fresh vegetables, and more. Now, obviously, it does have the indoor restaurant, but what I love is that there is this really cool outdoor bar. Uh, it seems a little elevated. It's got plenty of seats, so if you want to just, you know, uh, grab a quick drink at the bar, you can totally do that here at Terralina. Now, as for the best food here, this is going to seem like a little bit of a cop-out, but it's really hard to say no to this, especially for the rest of my team. We're talking Italian fries, and it's basically really well-seasoned, crispy fries with cheese and salami and when i say cheese i mean it's like a waterfall of cheese over these fries with plenty of salami it is it, it's a flavor explosion and it is not always easy to do fries trust me fries can come out too thin they can come out soggy they can come out oily but the fries were hot the crispy the cheese was tasty um the salami was salty it was the perfect combination and the italian fries that's that's going to be a win for me we are finally making our way into the marketplace and of course you can't miss it because the first restaurant you're gonna see in the marketplace is T-Rex. T-Rex is, according to Disney, an immersive restaurant designed to take you back in time to prehistoric times while you eat prehistoric food, which is very funny because this food is all recognizable. In fact, the menu is a little bit overwhelming because they kind of have everything. Really, I believe this is for families because uh, the best thing about this location is really the surroundings. You are completely immersed by a couple different areas. You've got a whole ice age area, kind of a fire lava area, an underwater area, a, a jungle area. Oh, oh, that was just moved. And a lot of these uh, dinosaurs and mammoths, they are all animatronic. Now, every once in a while, the restaurant inside simulates uh, an actual comet storm as if, you know, dinosaurs, extinction is upon us. The menu is extremely overwhelming. It's like, uh, it reminds me of the Cheesecake Factory where there are, there are so many things, you literally just can't decide uh, what you want. And unfortunately, the food reminds me of that, of that phrase or that saying where, you know, how one person can be an expert of like one or two things, but some people are mediocre at all things. That's kind of what T-Rex is. 
However, I will say the portions are huge and it's great for families, but really nothing stands out about the meal. Some people on our team, uh, if they were to choose something, they actually do enjoy the Paleozoic chicken sandwich, which is basically this lemon crusted blanco chicken, but overall kind of underwhelming. But surprisingly, because of the uh, giant animatronics and the immersiveness of it all, reservations are scarce. So if you want to come to this place, definitely grab a reservation. Or if you're an adult, you can just actually walk up to the bar and sit at the bar and it'll still be the full menu. Uh, but it is a walk-up bar and they will give you a full menu and you can eat there just fine. And does all this sound familiar? Like my, my descriptions? Because there's this, a similar place literally right across the street. And it's owned by the same people. Now, at the time of filming, Rainforest Cafe is under a little bit of construction. However, they are still open, but it is exactly the same as T-Rex. Instead of taking you back in time to the prehistoric era, they are transporting you into a tropical rainforest, where instead of simulating, uh, you know, a comet storm, it's a thunderstorm. Still larger than life animatronics, still pretty immersive, still an overwhelming menu. The only thing I have mildly enjoyed is the Blue Mountain Chicken Sandwich, but I did have that at the Lava Lounge. And the Lava Lounge does have the exact same menu as Rainforest Cafe. However, there's not really a wait and it's a pretty solid bar. Got some great uh, waterfront seats and uh, really uh, kind of peaceful. Except for when the the fire comes out that gets pretty loud also in the marketplace is earl of sandwich which is going to be your sandwich shop now if you've ever been to earl of sandwich not just here in disney springs but really uh anywhere in the country because they do have quite a lot of them and they are pretty popular you, you know that they have a wide variety of different sandwiches anything from breakfast sandwiches uh to hot sandwiches to even wraps but the one that i want to talk about because uh it's a holiday favorite and at the time of filming i am filming this during the holidays it's the Holiday Turkey Sandwich, which is basically a turkey, cornbread stuffing, gravy, cranberry sauce, and mayonnaise. The idea is basically Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner in a sandwich. It's delicious, it's sweet and savory. Uh, it, it really does, we joke, I, we have a joke around my friends. You, you wanna get the Thanksgiving sandwich? That's what we call it, because it literally tastes like Thanksgiving on a sandwich, so good. I said I wasn't gonna talk about pretzel stands, but shout out to Wetzel's Pretzels. <laughs> I, lo I love your pretzel bites. All right, we're ca crossing the boundary from the marketplace into the town center. First things first, Emirates Patisserie. This is literally gonna be your bakery, your cake shop. The reason to come here is really for their specialty themed uh, mini dome cakes. At the time of filming, uh, their themed uh, dome cake is going to be the Mickey Winter Hat Dome Cake, which is layers of vanilla chiffon, chai tea mousse, cranberry cherry, pat de fruit, almond crunch, and brown butter ganache. Oh my lord. Now, depending on what time of year it is, if there's a movie coming out, some sort of intellectual property that's important to promote at the time, they will have different themed cakes uh, or uh, treats, which I think is pretty cool. And each one that I've tried has been pretty delicious. Because it is the holidays, you're gonna find a bunch of different holiday-themed treats. Oh, see, there's the mini, there's the mini cakes like I talked about. Now, like I said, at the time of filming, I am here during the holidays, uh, and they do tend to rotate uh, different cakes, different sweets and treats, depending on what's happening. Uh, because of the holidays, they've got a really uh, great holiday offering, and it's actually a hot cocoa creme brulee, and it is just delicious. It's got that hard um, torched sugar uh, tasting on top. It really tastes like hot chocolate, but in mousse form. Uh, it's it's not overly sweet, which is super important to me. Uh, but yeah, go to Amaret's Patisserie just to uh, see what kind of new theme they've got. And I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about stands, but it's hard to leave this one out because it's such a Disney Springs staple. It's the Daily Poutine, which is your one-stop shop for all poutine. Poutine is basically French fries with cheese curds smothered in gravy. But they do have different uh, versions of poutine. Like they have the Italian, the Canadian, the butter chicken, and the Korean barbecue. Now I'm a classic kind of guy. I do love the Canadian, the French fries with beef, poutine, gravy, and cheddar curds. But the Korean barbecue is definitely a new favorite of mine. It's French fries, Asian barbecued pulled pork, kimchi, and sriracha aioli. Definitely gives it a little kick and definitely something worth trying. 
Over in the town center, you're gonna find one of Emma's favorite places to be, as well as mine. This is the Polite Pig. It's basically your bourbon barbecue joint. Right in the center of all the action, they have a 360 degree bar that has some really great beer on tap, as well as a full bourbon bar. They do have limited indoor seating, but they do have this nice outdoor patio. However, if you can, I recommend always sitting at the bar, uh, just because the bartenders are awesome. You can try one of their bourbon flights and they do serve a full menu there at the bar. Now I'm actually going to refer to Emma on this one. Uh, and I reached out to her, I said, hey girl, you gotta let me know what's your favorite thing to get at the Polite Pig. And she said, my husband and I always love to do the butcher board for two, which is Polite Pork. <laughs> Hope it's not rude pork. It's Polite Pork, smoked chicken, prime biscuit, and cheddar sausage with slaw, house pickles, two cornbreads, and a choice of two market sides. And you can add ribs and smoked turkey for additional cost. She raves about the barbecue here. She loves it. And she thinks uh, really getting the uh, butcher board for two has the best bang for its buck. So shout out to Emma on this one. Now kind of like hidden, it's weirdly hidden because it's right in the middle of things. We can typically walk the outskirts, uh, but yeah, it's, and this is a place that uh, I think is a little underrated. Frontera Coquina Mexicana. I don't know if I said that right. And this is where you're gonna try Mexican cuisine uh, from Chef Rick Bayless. Now, something I love out here that they don't typically do is they uh, is they already list some of the guest favorites, which is the guacamole, uh, the queso fundido, which is a favorite of mine, carne asada. Love that. But we're gonna talk about something a little bit different. Now inside there's a lot of beautiful Mexican artwork. Uh, the tile work is absolutely gorgeous, but <laughs> our, my, the entire team raves about the carnitas, which is basically slow cooked pork shoulder with, uh, with beans and cheese, um, warm tortillas, guacamole. I have yet to try this, but the Allers Net team says uh, this is one of their absolute favorites, so I cannot wait to get in there and try it. And if you are looking for the ultimate burger or a variety of different flavors of burger, this is where I recommend you come. This is Deluxe Burger. The Allers Net team says that I had to try this, so this is it. This is this is the um, Beef Wellington Burger. I mean, just next level. It's oily all the right ways. I was nervous about the puff pastry being, there being so much puff pastry and not enough meat, but the puff pastry actually flattens when you eat it. And it is just so good. The garlic aioli is strong. It is kicking. This is the ultimate cheat day burger. I'm a big Gordon Ramsay fan and his big thing is Beef Wellington. And honestly, I think this, I think this would make Gordon Ramsay intrigued. I don't know if he'd be like, this is the best burger ever. But I do think, I think there's a lot of great elements on here that really, that really transform a beef Wellington into a beef Wellington burger. It's got all the right components, the mushrooms, um, which I'm not crazy about mushrooms, but uh, it's just a, a must have for beef Wellington. It, it really encompasses what a beef Wellington is in a burger. So I think, I think Gordon Ramsay would be intrigued. Honestly, the beef Wellington burger was so oily in a good way, but still so oily that it made me think, oh, well, now I'm gonna get a giant zit afterwards. That's how oily it was. It's and zit's gonna look amazing. Now we come to Blaze Pizza, fast fired. And this is actually gonna be pretty interesting. Well, I'll, first things first, I'll tell you, uh, it's a pizza place. <laughs> It's actually a really great pizza place where uh, you can kind of choose your own adventure. You can build your own pizza and the whole thing is it's fast fired. So the whole thing is supposed to be done in 180 seconds. But you literally go down an assembly line as they make your pizza. It's like the Chipotle of pizza, Blaze Pizza. I don't think anybody has ever referred to Blaze Pizza like that before. Now there are some signature pizzas in case you can't make up your mind on what you actually want on your pizza. The thing that I actually do enjoy from time to time uh, just because well, I'll be honest here, I'm getting older. And um, <clears throat> tomato sauce gives me some, you know, acid reflux from time to time. So surprisingly, the white top is actually decent and I, I really enjoyed it when I had it, uh, if I'm not making my own pizza. And the white top is actually white cream sauce, mozzarella, bacon, garlic, oregano, and arugula. <clears throat> and for what it's worth, what they say, they actually delivered. The whole thing was done, I think almost in less than 180 seconds. So stay close by. You know, don't wander far when they're making your pizza. Then uh, grab a seat and you'll be good to go. That brings us to Planet Hollywood. And yes, it is the same Planet Hollywood you're thinking about. The one that's, you know, all over. A few years ago, 
Planet in Hollywood kind of got a little bit of a revamp. It's not the same, you know, blue and starry building. It's now more of an observatory. Inside of Planet Hollywood, they invite you to enjoy innovative cuisine, live entertainment, and really cool movie memorabilia. That is definitely one of the things I will give Planet Hollywood credit for. It is very cool inside. Lots of movie memorabilia. However, innovative cuisine, unfortunately, my team doesn't necessarily agree with. You will need a reservation for this place, whether or not we like the food, just because Planet Hollywood, it has a name, it has a following, and it's impossible to miss when you enter Disney Springs. It's, but it is going to be your American cuisine, your burgers, your chicken fingers, your steaks, uh, basically um, a menu where you could probably get whatever you wanted. Now, it is basically $14 chicken tenders, which I know that seems like a little bit of a price, uh, but they are quite good. First things first, it comes in like a little rooster basket, so that's kind of cute. But also, uh, these, these chicken tenders have a sweetness to it because one of the uh, secret ingredients in the crunch aspect is literally Captain Crunch. So that's kind of fun. Planet Hollywood is not one of the places I would recommend when coming to Disney Springs just because there are so many other great things Springs has to offer now. So if you want to do one for the experience, sure, go for it. Get the bacon mac and cheese burger. Get your Captain Crunch chicken fingers. Do it up. But then give me a call when you want to explore your taste buds a little bit with cheese that's on fire. Right next to Planet Hollywood is Chicken Guy. And this is where you can enjoy chicken and sauces, all with Guy Fieri's signature flair. This is definitely more of a grab and go situation. As you can see, there's not a lot of seats in here. There is a separate room where you can grab some seats, but there is some slight outdoor seating. The thing that I'm going to completely recommend to you, and it might seem like a little bit of a cop out, is you just gotta get the chicken tenders and sauce. Now each chicken tender meal does come with two sauces, but you can purchase each additional sauce for 50 cents. I recommend getting five, at least five sauces and just experiment. I think that's half of the fun of Chicken Guy. And they'll let you know which ones are Guy Fieri's favorites. What are the classics like ranch, blue cheese? Those are simple. I would go on the favorite side and the hot and spicy because those are gonna be your most um, unique. Wasabi honey was very interesting. Garlic Parmesan, always a favorite. Donkey sauce, also extremely unique. In fact, Emma and I did a whole taste test. You can check that out up on the channel. And finally, Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill, where you can try Wolfgang Puck specialty dishes and cocktails. Now, you are typically going to need a reservation. However, from what I have seen, this is not a super uh, in-demand restaurant. So I don't think you'll typically, uh, it, it won't be a long wait if there is a wait at all. I don't believe I, <laughs> I don't believe I agree with this assessment only because I am not a huge salmon person. However, our team believes that a Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill, the best thing to get here is the salmon burger. Apparently it is next level. According to our team, the salmon is the same salmon that they use for their filet. It's sushi grade salmon on a burger. It's like a hint of garlic. Apparently it was absolutely to die for. So uh, I'm not a huge fan of salmon, but I guess now I'm gonna have to try a salmon burger. What a day it's been. I was super nervous we were going to uh, run out of time, and I'm glad we didn't. The, the entertainment's already started. Sun's starting to go down a little bit. Out of all the restaurants we went to today, do you have a favorite dish at any of those? Did I miss one? Let me know. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch Quincy tell you all the best things she ate at Epcot.